I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Petekir. So you have probably seen my videos on a priority series that I want to start and finish uh, next year and also my list of most anticipated book release of 2024. But before we reach 2024, uh, well, there is still one more video to talk about and it is a list of the books that I want to read before the end of the year, before we reach uh, 2024. And as I always say, I don't usually read a lot of books in the month of December. Actually, come to think about it, the first half of a December TBR, of my December TBR, will consist of me just reading all the books that I couldn't get around to reading uh, this month. Because as expected, I did not manage to be as productive as the month of October due to several reasons which I will get to talk about uh, later. In today's video, I will mention nine titles. Now, do not be surprised because uh, four of these titles are probably collection of short stories and also novellas. They are pretty short, probably about 100 or 200 pages at most. And before I talk about all these books that I want to read uh, next month in the month of December, I am happy to say that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, for those of you who don't know, Skillshare is one of the first few companies that wanted to sponsor me all the way back when I just started uh, my YouTube channel. So I think uh, this is pretty cool. But yeah, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. For the uninitiated, Skillshare is an online learning community. Skillshare has classes on a wide variety of topics including illustration, graphic design, photography, creative writing and animation, cover art and cover design, film and video making, social media, and many more. Whether you want to learn the basics of video editing, watercolor painting, or learn how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has classes to take you from beginner to pro alongside a supportive community. Today, I want to recommend a class I took, and it is Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro for Beginners 2024 by Jordi Vanderput. My YouTube channel is three years old now, and I feel like when it comes to editing, I still have a lot to learn. Sometimes it is necessary to go back to the basics again. Video making and editing is a step every YouTuber has to take, and the purpose of this class and video is to teach you those integral first steps in video editing. I often get asked which lesson about video editing to take to become a booktuber, and this video lesson is a great example that covers all the necessary first steps. The first 500 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now let's talk about all the books that I want to read before the end of the year. And the first one is uh, The God is Not Willing by Steven Erickson. I have talked about this in my previous TBR video. Well, honestly, I have no idea how many times I have mentioned The God is Not Willing in my TBR video, but this time I'm making it pretty clear that I will be reading this. This will be the first book that I read in the month of December. And yeah, this is the first book in the Witness trilogy, a sequel trilogy to the Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. The 10 books epic fantasy series by Steven Erickson that has become one of my favorite series of all time. And all these years, ever, si ever since I finished reading Malazan Book of the Fallen, I have always wanted to read The God is Not Willing, but I was a bit apprehensive that maybe it was required for me to do a second read of the entire Malazan Book of the Fallen first before reading uh, The God is Not Willing. But many Malazan fans, Philip Chase included, have told me that it is not necessary to do a second read of every book in Malazan Book of the Fallen again, as long that I have actually read through Malazan Book of the Fallen, because this one takes place about a decade after the ending of The Crippled God. The, the Crippled God is the 10th and the final book in Malazan Book of the Fallen. And yeah, I look forward to reading uh, The God is Not Willing. Finally, this is, as I said, the first book in a new trilogy. I am not sure uh, when the second and the third book of the trilogy will be released. But I am excited to, well, to go back to the world of Malazan. And some of you might know about this, but I am currently working on a cover art of the entire Malazan Book of the Fallen, the Broken Binding Edition, together with a cover artist named Felix Ortiz. I think many of you who follow my channel will know who he is. And the progress has been going really well for the first book, uh, Gardens of the Moon. We'll be working on Death House Gates and also Memories of Ice really soon. That's all I can say about this. After The God is Not Willing, I have to mention this book by my friend, uh, Philip Chase. Yeah, Philip Chase, as I think many of you know, is a huge fan of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. And I wanted to get around to reading this one uh, within this month, but apparently that is not possible. It's not even because I didn't read a lot of books. I have actually read uh, 
I have actually read seven or eight titles, I think. But the next book that I'm going to read is a big one and I think it will take me the last week of November to finish. But yeah, I have posted my review for the first book, uh, The Way of Eden, on my booktube channel and I really like that one. I heard from a lot of my viewers that The Prophet of Eden, the second book in the Eden trilogy, and also Return to Eden, the third and the final book in the Eden trilogy, are superior compared to The Way of Eden. And I have kind of missed reading a Philip Chase writing. And yeah, his writing style kind of reminded me of uh, Ted Williams and also J.R.R. Tolkien's. It seems like a blend between the two of them and yeah, I just want to read a prose like that again in the classic fantasy that is told with a, with a modern voice and I think I will get that again in The Prophet of Eden. Hopefully this will indeed be better than The Way of Eden and yeah, I will read this one after the god is not willing. As for the next two books that I'm going to read, these are kind of responsible to why uh, my November reading month is not too productive and it is uh, Satanic by uh, Brandon Sanderson. So I wanted to read Satanic uh, within this month and also finish the entire Skyward Flight uh, Omnibus edition uh, this month. But I couldn't do it because uh, the Skyward Flight, for those of you who don't know, consists of three titles being combined into one Omnibus edition. They are marketed as novellas, but I don't think these are actually true because these three titles, uh, Sunridge, Redon, and also Evershore, they are bigger than I expected. Each title is about 60,000 words long. That's the length of a short novel, not a novella. Novella is usually below uh, 50,000 words long. So I managed to read uh, Sunridge and Redon, but I have to take a break. Yeah, uh, those two titles, although they were good, they they weren't something amazing and I wanted to take a break from Cytoverse and that's why I will be reading uh, Cytonic in the month of December. Uh, I heard many mixed things about this one. Hopefully I don't end up feeling too disappointed by Cytonic and then after that I will read the final title in Skyward Flight, uh, Evershore. I heard this one is the best of the Skyward Flight uh, omnibus and I hope that will be true. So it seems like it will not be possible for me to read Defiant in the month of December and I guess I have to uh, read that in the month of January instead. So the four books I just talked about, they are pretty much in my November TBR videos. But for these remaining five titles, well, they are pretty much a standalone or maybe novellas or even collection of short stories. So basically, I don't want to start anything new, any new series after I'm done reading the previous four. And that's also assuming that I can actually read through all five of this. And the first one that I want to read, uh, this is a standalone novel by Palmer Pickering, Helio Troop. I haven't actually heard a lot of things about Helio Troop, but based on what I heard from my fellow booktubers friends who have actually read this one, it seems like this will be a standalone novel that I will enjoy because this, uh, this is a one-off standalone novel written in supposedly an accessible writing style, plus it has some of my favorite troops, and that includes the badass and the child troop. That is one of my favorite troops in storytelling, and I think from this premise it is confirmed that this badass and the child troop will be included this and also found family. This is the premise of the book. Teleo is a retired soldier descended from mages who were cast out of power generations ago. After years of war and sorrow, he wants nothing more than to live a quiet life on his farm and work his stone mason's craft. His wife and daughter had been murdered during a war raid several years earlier and his young son stolen by the enemy side. He spent years unsuccessfully searching for his son and returned home brokenhearted. At the local castle, he comes upon a war orphan stolen by his side from the enemy and rescues him from abuse, adopting him as his foster son. Teleo is working on a stone mosaic for the queen at the castle when he finds himself in the middle of a coup. This launches a journey to protect his new family, uncover the secrets of the ancient ways, and reclaim the magic of the mages. I think Heliotrope will be something that I really enjoyed, and I look forward to reading this one uh, in the month of December. And once I'm done with Heliotrope, I plan to read uh, Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 2 by Christopher Rocchio. So at the time of recording this video, I am about to start reading A Demon in White the third book in the Sun Eater series. And I think you will hear me, I think you will see me or hear me talking about Demon in White really soon on my YouTube channel. If all goes according to plan, I want to post a book review of Demon in White on my YouTube channel as well. But yeah, after that, I plan to read uh, Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 2. I have actually read Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 1 uh, this month, and I think it was a bit of a mixed ex experience for me, but 
it's always it always happens when it comes to a collection of short stories unless it is a collection of short stories written by Ken Liu but yeah not every author can be Ken Liu when it comes to writing short story I just think Christopher Rocchio is always at his best when he's writing in a novel format in a big novel format and yeah I am very pumped to read Demon in White and I will be keeping my fingers crossed that Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 2 will be better than Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 1 uh, after I posted my review on Goodreads some have actually mentioned that Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 2 is actually better than Volume 1 and yeah I'm excited to get around to it and after I'm done with Tales of the Sun Eater Volume 2 I want to read The Heart of What Was Lost by Tad Williams <laughs> in my list of priority series video and my most anticipated books uh, video of 2024 so many comments told me to read The Heart of What Was Lost before I start reading The Last King of Boston Art don't worry about it I have always planned to read all the books and all the novellas in the Austin Art Saga by Ted Williams. And yeah, this is why I will read The Heart of What Was Lost first before we reach The Last King of Austin Art Journey in the year 2024. This one I think takes place after the end of Two Green Angel Tower. And once again, I'll be reading this together with my patrons who have went through the journey of reading through Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn together with me. Very excited uh, to get back to reading Tad Williams' books, not gonna lie. And finally, uh, for the last novella, this is still a possibility assuming that a review copy do actually arrive at my place. And this is for The Narrow Road Between Desires by Patrick Rothfuss. If it does arrive, then I will read The Narrow Road Between Desire. As far as I know, this has probably about uh, 10,000 words edition compared to the lightning tree I I don't know how substantial that reading experience will change but I guess I'll find out as far as lightning tree goes I really love that a novella or short story I'm not sure what to call it probably a novella because if I'm not mistaken the lightning tree is about 20,000 words long and the narrow road between desire is about 30,000 words long but yeah, I love The Lightning Tree and I hope the additional word count of 10,000 being added to the narrow road between desires will actually enhance the overall quality of the narrative in the book. Thus, The Narrow Road Between Desires actually contain many interior illustrations by Nate Taylor. At the very least, if the narrative in The Narrow Road Between Desire doesn't contain a lot of great changes or additional content compared to The Lightning Tree, then I will at least feel fortunate to see all Nate Taylor's artwork inside the book. And finally, for the last book that I want to read before the end of the year, this will be a second read, as I said in the beginning of this video, of one of my most uh, favorite book of all time. And this will be a second read of The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. And apparently, I read The Sword of Kaigen in January 2019. It's almost five years since I read The Sword of Kaigen for the first time and ever since then, the popularity and the praises for this book has pretty much skyrocketed. And I am very pleased about that because this book absolutely deserved it. I think to this day, this is still my favorite self-published fantasy book and also my favorite standalone novel. And now that I own this beautiful limited edition of The Sword of Kaigen published by Ritmar Creative, my mood to dive back into their story again this devastating and emotional story has been sparked uh, again and yeah I look forward to doing a second read of the Sword of Kaigen as my last read of the year so that's it that's my December TBR that's all the books that I want to read before the end of the year do let me know what you think about my December TBR and how many books do you plan to read uh, next month do you plan to read a lot in the last month of the year or not as always thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support bye bye Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.